A very good afternoon to all of you. My name is Amit, as introduced. There were three Amits in my class. I was the third Amit. The first two Amits were quite popular. They always had a fight to secure the first rank in my class. In one class, the first Amit was the ranker. In the next class, it was the other Amit. I was the tenth Amit with a zero in front of that one. And everybody used to ask me, what's special about me? I was quite perturbed about this. I was not good at studies. I sought my refuse in sports. I was a batsman. I used to play forward for my football team. And I have participated in all the games, right from running a 400 meter race to playing Coco. In all the games I participated when in school. My teacher once asked, what do you want to become? I said, I don't know. The other two Amits had quite clear idea what they wanted to become. I was a talkative Amit. I used to talk a lot. Once I was made to sit in midst of the girl students. The reason was if I sit in, in between the uh, benches where the girls sit, I will stop talking. That didn't happen. The girls started speaking more in the class. Second, they gave me a separate bench to not to interact with anyone. But that didn't stop. People used to come to my desk and share jokes. They made me a class monitor. Till then, the class monitors were either the first Amit or the second Amit. Now, when I became the monitor, what I, I struck a deal with my classmates that I will stay near the door. And if someone comes, I will alert you and you stop talking. The deal was to just talk in a low voice so that nobody hears. I am telling you, our class got the best class, most disciplined class award for three years. So what the lead, what, how did I get these things? My teacher once told me that you are unique. You need not have to be special. You need not have to be the other Amits. You are special. That value in me was inculcated by my teachers who didn't find me any less better than the other two Amits. That value learning has made me a leader. As I was the monitor of that class, now I lead a police team in Bidhanagar. So that value learning was quite crucial, that, which I learned in my school. Second, I studied in a government school. The building was shared by... Uh, by a school meant for the blind students. There was a juvenile home uh, nearby which was adjacent to the building. Now, all I used to always complain that we don't have enough space. When we play, then these blind children run around and we can't play in the ground. They, we see them, there are no, not enough space. Our prayer halls are occupied by them. And I used to complain that the Blind students should be shifted somewhere else and we can have the entire building. When my teacher asked me, what do you think about our school? You just have to share your feelings about the school. I said that the blind students should leave the school and it should be meant for our school only. This building should be meant for our school only. My teacher told me that it is not you who, are, who is putting up with those students. They are putting up with you. This building belongs to the blind school. Your school is getting ready. It has been constructed. Till then, they are generous enough to lend space for your school to run here. And mind you, they can't see you. They can only hear your noises and they don't complain. If they can sh stay with you, they can share the space, space with you, why can't you share the space with them? The value learned was you have to share. You have to be considerate. You may think that you are putting up with others you are tolerating their attitudes. It may be the other way around. Lesson learned that always be concentrate. Forbearance is a learned attitude and that I learned in my school. Now, these values what I'm talking about made me what I am today. I was in my secondary school. I had a friend called Saifuddin. He was my friend. He was a dear friend of mine. In 1993, there was an event in the country where a mosque was demolished and there was quite a problem. And our city had a mixed population. I remember I didn't know how to deal with my friend because he belonged to a different community. Whenever we used to talk about religion, though it affected us, we used to hear news. It was discussed in our drawing rooms. It was discussed in, 
um, our playgrounds. But when he, I, when it came to us, we never had to discuss those topics. One day I was walking with him. They were, they, there was a temple on the side of a footpath. I, I had this habit of removing my slippers and folding my hand in front of that temple. When my friend came with me, he saw me doing this, he removed his slippers and stood beside me. I thought, I asked him, why did you do this? I mean, he's a Muslim. I didn't have any idea that he would be doing this thing. He said that, I think it makes you feel better. It is your God I should respect. Value learnt. Don't judge people, your friends, by what you hear in the world. Your relationship with everyone is special. You need not have to generalize your thoughts, your prejudices on everyone. These values I have learnt in the school, the school plays a very important role. Starting with the values, they are inherent to you. They are the core of your personality. It decides your thoughts. It decides your actions. It decides your emotions. It decides your attitude towards, the, towards life, towards every, everything that you interact with. What about thoughts? It is like a pebble that you drop on a pond. If you have to draw an analogy between personality and a lake, if you consider a personality as a lake, when you drop a pebble in a lake, it creates waves, it creates ripples. Those ripples are nothing but your thoughts. Bigger the pebble, harder you throw, more are the waves generated. Similarly, values are like pebble. The pebble you drop, how strongly you drop them, that determines your thought and the strength of your thoughts. If you cultivate good values, Similarly, it will be reflected in your thoughts, in your achievements, in your attitude towards others and towards work, and also your emotions. You can't inculcate values without feeling emotional about it. That's the reason why it should be important in all the schools to teach values before you teach something else or share information. Without values, Everything that is taught is just learning. With value education, it becomes education. I'm quite happy. When I was in school, I, just, I remember learning about the solar system. I knew only one thing. My very educated mother just taught me nine planets. It meant Mars, Venus, uh, Mercury, <coughs> Venus, Earth, Mars, and so forth, nine planets. I'm very happy my daughter asked me this question. Papa, how long does it take to reach moon? Why are there no planets on Mars? Why Saturn has those rings? Now, these questions I never asked to my parents. I didn't ask this to my teachers. Reason was, I never thought about it. If you create an environment which is value-based, when you make them think, make them rationalize, make them ask questions, they will become seekers of knowledge rather than recipient of knowledge. Second, no matter how big or small the school is, there is unnecessary hurry in knowing everything, in understanding everything. You hear about people, just now we heard a girl at such young age, she spoke flawless language and she was so confident about it. We got really scared that at that age, if she could do it, I couldn't achieve after so many years of practice of, with my public discourse. It's not important to learn anything fast. It's not important to learn anything at all. Swami Vivekananda was once asked, what would you do if you were to be born again? Now, it's a very important question to a famous personality. That's again, I have learned from the books that I've read from the Ramakrishna Mission. He said that I would like to learn what I have learned in a systematic way. It's not important what you learn. Learning systematically is really important. What it means is we need not have to be cogs in the machine. You have to become a participatory and contributing member of a society. You become a police officer. You become a doctor. You become a dancer. You become an engineer. If you're not committed, if you're not passionate about your work, there's no point. You will have a soul of a dancer, but you will be working as a police officer. You will have a soul of a doctor, but you will be working as a, an engineer. My father wanted me to become an engineer, but I turned up to be a doctor. I wanted to become something else, but I turned out something 
else this thing will always hold you from becoming something when you hear about people who are successful you hear about famous personalities being dropouts in the school even then they are successful you know why because in school they not only they not only learnt about the curriculum they focused on their values in a class of a number of students people become different personalities the difference is in their values while the curriculum remains the same teachers remain the same infrastructure remains the same socio economic status remains the same more or less why do people become different personalities the reason is the value that they imbibe during their school days being ambitious is really good it's great to be ambitious you need to be ambitious but without values you become self centered you become only self centered think about yourself your success matters a lot to you if you have values you become a leader you become sensitive sensitive to others all great things are achieved by great people and if you ask them why what made them great it is the values that they have in them next is harmony and positive impact on the environment i've seen people we talk a lot when there there's a ngo in mysore which runs a free school and hospital for the tribals in the forest all the workers there are either doctors and engineers who have left their profession and have dedicated themselves to the cause of upliftment of the tribal people now we when we see tribal people we either sympathize them we hear about their problems but do nothing there are people who are motivated by their values they say that i should do something which should make a difference in the world with their education they have gone to the hinterland and have served the poor now when you have value education when you when you give importance to values rather than rote learning what is the result is there is more harmony in the world and your success spe speaks for itself and there is a positive impact on the environment the chipko movement can it be is it possible without anybody feeling emotional about cutting down of trees where do they learn all these things from the school many now people are more aware my daughter came to me i was just having some sprouts she saw the funny little things that were dangling from the seeds she asked what is this i explained her the, those are sprouts that it is the beginning of life you should value life when you take the seed and plant it you will have a plant she had no idea about plants she had no idea how they grow she planted that particular seed and saw that in few days it was a full grown plant and there were seeds to it she was quite excited then she tried to sow few more things like few leaves a stem then she said why doesn't it grow i said and my wife who is an equal partner in her in teaching her she said that it is it you can't have plants only from seeds some plants require grafting and then she understood the concept of grafting now i think if i ask her what do you want the most once she said papa i want to be a gardener i want to have garden of my own i want to plant forest an idea is sown into her to value environment to value life to value what is what we have our food value food all these things are demonstrated to her just by one ins instance by asking her to do certain things and to discover on her own own how life emerges the next thing is good thing about values is they are not innate they are not god gifted they are all learnt values are learnt either in the school environment or in the family family being the first school or the agent of socialization where you learn things from your parents the family is there to live you don't there is an understanding between the parents that we will teach the values that we have the scope is limited somebody's father is a doctor a professor a policeman they have limited values or else have little time to interact with their own children 
when they come to school they see their teachers their friends the staff that helps the teachers they see the shopkeepers sitting in front of the school all these people have an impact on the values of the children as i gave an example my friend taught me what actual religion religion is forbearance and respect for others is the best way of showing your religion to the others my friend taught me that in school second similarly being sensitive to the others that's what my teacher taught to me now all these exposures are in school environment in school environment everybody is in a mission mode to impart knowledge to the people if it is value based the children will understand why they are seeking information or else we will all end up becoming either clerks or people working for others you will never realize your own dream have those values values which will sustain environment value that will sustain the world value which will make you unique value which will respect others value which will make you you need not have to be special at all you just have to live and don't be a trouble to anyone else that itself is a value and that's a great value i have never seen any we are a billion population more than a billion population we have numerous engineering colleges i don't think there is any other country with so many engineering colleges other than india how many patents are registered every year in india there is a big gap between the education that we impart technical education and the number of patients that we have what does it suggest that we have stopped questioning stopped asking why this thing is important mere rote le rote learning mere thinking that this is going to make me employable is not going to work and most importantly values really make you happy any behavior any action which is inconsistent with your values will certainly disturb your happiness for example if you find a wallet or a purse on the road your instincts will say keep the money with you you can fulfill your dreams whatever that you desired in life you can buy with the money that you have got on the road immediately your values will set in and say that you are not a thief this property belongs to someone else it has to be restored to the original owner what you do that you pick up the wallet ask about the ask about ask around and look for the person who has dropped it or else go to the police station and hand over this particular that particular wallet to the police men who can restore it to the owner now when you do this what makes you feel good is it the restoring of the wallet or using the money for your own benefit mind you if you feel good by giving it to the the right owner those are the values that are speaking second if you are not giving it again those are the wrong values that you are inculcating but what makes you happy inherently you know that this is right and this is wrong and if you do the right thing you tend to be more happy than the others handling stress if you do something which is inconsistent with with the with your values it will create stress how to handle stress is very important you hear about suicides in the country those who are studying in premier institutions commit suicide those who are at the helm of affairs committing suicide those who are in a best of professions look beautiful committing suicides what has gone wrong the wrong thing is wrong values that i need to be successful in the eyes of others life is nothing but achieving what i want to be achieve like your professional goals you have to be gritty you have to be disciplined but if you don't get that thing you need not have to worry about life is much more than these things if you understand that then you will then you will cherish other passions for example i had no opportunity to learn music in my school days when i was in school my friend took me to a church and he used to go to the church every sunday i thought it is fun i tagged along when i went there i saw few people playing guitar and playing the uh, music in the church i really liked it i started going to the church it not only gave a different dimension about religion that particular religion to me was very important in my personality no, learning about the bible what's important is i tried to learn guitar when i could afford it i bought a guitar and start learning it 
Now, these things are very important in, in your upbringing. If you think that your passions are important, if I'm stressed because of my job, I pick up a guitar, play a few chords, I feel relaxed. Your values determine what is important in life. Cultivate the right values. The environment. You must have heard about your teachers not to waste food, not to, to keep your lights on. All these things are learned in school. They teach you how it just, it's not just the information in the textbooks. It's the teachers who make you feel that what you have learned is relevant in, the, in, re, relevant in life. My grandfather used to take me to shop every week. And he used to argue with the shopkeeper for just a couple of rupees. I used to tell him that why don't you give the money? And because he has come so far to sell vegetables, why don't you be so be a little generous and give the money to him? He will go home soon after selling the vegetables. He told me one thing, value money. If you want to do philanthropy, if you want to donate money, you can do it. But when it comes to business, you have to negotiate. It determines the right price. He will be happy going that he has got the right price. You will be happy getting the right price for what you have, what you have bought. That is not, don't mix business with your emotions. It was a great value. I thought that uh, you should be generous and just spend. It is not the case. All these issues that I understood made me, I'm quite frugal in my day-to-day -day, uh, living. I value what I have, uh, what I have earned. I don't spend uh, freely. The reason is that I have understood the value of money. This has been told. I have seen uh, such uh, friends in my school who were from a very poor background and they used to struggle to m just to, ensure, to make ends meet. And then I understood that it is, we can't take life for granted. Life is too precious to understand and you have to value more than anything else. Lastly, earn your living and live your earning. I will end this session with only one story. This is a story about, not about the school environment. In fact, it is about the lack of it. There was a girl who went to the school, had great education in a village, not taught much about history, geography, economics, as happens in any school in the village. You hardly find teachers, but what was taught to her is values. And one thing that was taught to that girl was that education is much more important, important than anything else. It will set you free. This thing that she had in mind that education sets people free. She didn't understand that. She was married off at the age of 16 years. She couldn't write her 10th exam. And she got married. Her husband had brothers, sisters who were dependent on the brother. And the brother took the responsibility of educating everyone. The brothers became engineers, the sisters became professors, they all got settled. And after 10 years, after bearing three children, and after taking care of the entire household, at the age of 28, she expressed her desire to her husband to get an education. As the husband had educated all his brothers and sisters, he said that, why not you? I will certainly support you. At the age of 28, she wrote her 10th exam, after that 12th exam and BA, she finished her bachelor's in arts, MA, masters, then MPhil, she became a teacher and then after finishing her PhD, she became a lecturer. Mind you, during this struggle, she ensured that her children do not suffer and her children used to get three hot meals every day. She used to walk from her school and prepare food and go back. I'm proud to say that she is my mother. Now, if she had, she understood, and my brother is an engineer, my sister is a doctor. She, she said only one thing when I was in school. She said one thing that if I, if you read a page somewhere lying around, it has something to teach you. You are reading books, volumes of such knowledge. You should be a better person than others. She said that education is one thing that liberates you. It makes you think beyond yourself, beyond your immediate surroundings. And it's a pleasure in, in knowing things and behaving which is, which is consistent with your values and with your environment. 
Now, I think that's, that's the inspiration that I have. We need to make our school environments more value laden, make them to understand that passions are important, which are guided in the right way, and mere living or mere learning just for the sake of earning a living is not enough. Thank you.